What's up everybody? This is the Act Man here, and today we're going to be looking at the worst gaming hot takes out there in cyberspace. I've covered quite a few of these hot takes in the past. I'm sure you all remember the infamous extra credits video. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. Anything from the war against video games. EA did nothing wrong. Man, there's a lot of bad takes out there. Why can't everyone just have better opinions like me? I've never had a hot take. Okay! But I figured instead of just focusing on one, we could open the door to the crap factory. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit, and ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna pick it all. But before we jump into it, this video is sponsored by Displate. Displate offers a ton of different metal-made posters for you to express your passions, ranging from gaming, anime, retro, movies and TV shows. It has a little something for everyone. And they come in three different sizes. Look at this one. I chose the impossible. Raptures never looked so beautiful. Well, would you look at that? It's Soler and Siegmeier. How quaint. Hello, Zuko here. And it's real simple to mount it on your wall. Simply peel off this leaflet, stick it on your wall to prevent damage, slap on the magnets, hold for five seconds, yeah! and there you go. Displate has a summer sale going on right now. Buy one or two posters at 24% off, three to four, 32% off. And if you buy more than five, get a 37% discount. And if you use the link in the description, it'll automatically apply the discount to any purchase. So go check it out. Get yourself some new wall decor and display yourself. Thank you Display for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the hot takes. After the Black Ops Cold War trailer, man, was that divisive. And now, neo-Nazis, alt-writers, MAGAs are having a field day because a top-selling video game just put out an anti-communist, borderline, fascist red pill for millions of people. And apparently it's pushing a far-right conspiracy, which, uh, you know, if you're excited for Black Ops Cold War, you're probably a fascist. <laughs> Let's talk about some of the more common hot takes, like the whole video games are a waste of time spiel. We've seen politicians spout this crap, and even Joe Rogan got some flack for his comments. Video games are a real problem. They're a real problem. You know why? Because they're fucking fun. Addictive. And you don't, yeah, well, I'm, I have a real problem with them. And you, you, you do them, and they're real exciting, but you don't get anywhere. But the bottom of the barrel, absolute worst version of this, is right here. Video games are the absolute worst loser habit you could have. Video games make you a bottom tier subhuman. You think you're restoring your humanity in Dark Souls? Pfft, nah, you're losing it. I will say though, Detroit Become Subhuman was one of my favorite games of the last few years. You dishonor your ancestors by playing video games. I don't think my great grandfather gives a shit what I do. What's next? People are gonna say video games make you violent or racist or sexist? I'm hearing more and more people say the level of violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. Isn't it weird how this criticism isn't often leveled at other leisure activities? Like, like people just like to pick on video games for whatever reason. Like, oh, here's this medium that I don't understand. I, I wrote a blog post a while ago about why I f***ing hate video games. Because this is what it does, it appeals to like the male fantasy. Really, I think it's the type of person that is obsessed with like, if you're not working out, eating, sleeping, or making money in some way, you're wasting your time. Oh, what's that? You've got two kids, a beautiful wife or husband, a nice home, and you like to play Mario Kart with your kids every now and then? Well, guess what? You're a <laughs> failure, <laughs> you freaking subhuman. You have to wonder why people take to the internet to just oh, video games. I hate them so much, gamers. A lot of news channels, especially Fox, have come out with some pretty hilarious crap in the past. It's a, a new role-playing video game that is leaving nothing to the imagination. Mass Effect is what it's called. In some parts of this, you'll see full uh, digital nudity. Imagine. And the ability for the players to engage in graphic sex and the, the person who's playing the game gets to decide exactly what's going to happen between the two people, if you know what I mean. No. We know that all the research shows that violence has a um, desensitizing effect. Well, sexuality does too. It's fiction. It's fiction. 
we made it up. They don't show women as being valued for anything other than their sexuality. You're a liar! You're a liar! And it's a man in this game deciding right. how many women he wants to be with. All right, let's get Jeff in on this. All right, that's uh, com go ahead, completely Jeff. incorrect. You like how the dude on here is just like, um, that's incorrect. <laughs> Brilliant idea for a news segment. Let's get one person who isn't familiar with the actual subject and another who is, and just let them go at it. Was their goal to make this lady look stupid? Yeah, it's completely incorrect. First of all, you can actually play as a man or a woman in the game. Cooper, have you ever played Mass Effect? No, no, no. You dumb bitch. <laughs> You're coming to this news program with incorrect information. You've just done even the slightest bit of research. You would have known that. Ooh, here's a spicy one. Playing Bioshock Infinite in the age of Trump is unsettling, but not for the obvious reasons. Come on, dog. America isn't perfect, but are you really suggesting that modern day America is at all similar to Colombia? We don't have any flying cities. My husband and I bought our PS4 to escape 2017, but then the game I chose to play was Bioshock Infinite. In the first year of Donald Trump's America, that's no escape at all. So go play something else. Problem solved, no article necessary. But in trying to find my way through this gorgeously wrought fantasy land, I learned two things very quickly that made it hard to forget the real world. One of the common threads in these hot takes is like people writing articles and being unable to separate themselves from reality. Like that's the point of a game or like a movie or TV show is just to enjoy something as preposterous as a concept as that sounds. Like, they can't just enjoy a game for what it is. They have to make it about themselves and, like, inject their own beliefs and, like, whatever they're going through into what they're playing. This article is written like the lady turned on Bioshock Infinite and it was like the intro of Gex where you just get sucked into the TV. It's like, oh no, I can't escape. I can't escape 2017. <laughs> Play a different game. Bioshock Infinite made it possible for me to experience not just what it's like to be a straight white man, but what it's like to be Donald Trump. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. That, that was the big takeaway. This game really makes you feel like Donald Trump. 9 out of 10 has a little something for everyone, too much air. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's Persona 5 DLC includes a disability slur. My apologies to anyone offended by the following passage. I need to read it just so you get the full effect. So this is what they thought the song said. Oh, ah, uh, hi. Are you ready? Ready to pick up the pieces. Let's go. Let's play. Retarded. Because... <laughs> Because that's a phrase people use. Hey son, you ready to go to the basketball game? Yes dad, let's go. Let's play retarded. I actually feel bad for the singer because apparently English isn't her first language. Pretty sure this article was slander actually. Hot take requirement number seven, lack of research. During the height of the Battlefront 2 loot box controversy, EA's community manager showed off his incredible people skills when he called us all armchair developers. What makes this a hot take, you ask? It's the gatekeeping. It's the implication that unless you develop video games, you have no place to criticize them. Here's your food, sir. Oh, the steak is burnt. Goddamn armchair chefs telling me how to do my job. You vicious! Upon reading this next hot take, I thought I misplaced my steaming pile of dog shit, but actually I just ended up on Salon. Brace yourselves. The Legend of Zelda is classist, sexist, and racist. The Unholy Triforce. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I do agree with Anita Sarkeesian on one thing. And that is, remember that it's both possible and even necessary to simultaneously enjoy media while also being critical of its more problematic or pernicious aspects. Now that's all fine and dandy if you want to write about social issues, but is basing it on Ocarina of Time really the best way to do that? Ocarina portrays the apprentices or journeymen as lazy and shiftless, and the boss as the only one willing to work. 
By focusing on the greed of individuals, the game ignores how private property incentivizes and even mandates such behavior. And with this moralizing focus comes a belief that society's economic ills are intractable because of humanity's flawed nature. How in God's name are you drawing this conclusion from Ocarina of Time? <laughs> Karl Marx described this relationship as one of oppressor and oppressed. Legend of Zelda, pfft, ditch that title, man. Should have called it Karl Marx and the Ocarina of Communism. <laughs> what am I reading? From the perspective of domesticated animals, agriculture of the past was a gentler prospect in the modern factory farm system, but for non-humans, the pre-industrial farm as symbolized by Lon Lon Ranch was still a place of exploitation and violence. What kind of person gets to Lon Lon Ranch and is like, you know, animal rights really are important. This is like pseudo-intellectualism at its most obvious. You can write an article with fancy language, integrating all these political aspects, and even if there is some point to be gained from this turd, the premise is so ridiculous, it, you can't take it seriously. In what world do you think the creators of Ocarina of Time were thinking about Karl Marx's racism, sexism, and class issues? Where did you get this from? If a person consistently reads and advocates the views expressed in a communist publication, he may be a communist. The Legend of Zelda franchise seems to attract a lot of these hot takes. It's actually impressive how deep the rabbit hole goes. There never really was a Dark Link. Link in the Zelda series are just racist. Well, excuse me, princess. Dark Link's not a black version of Link, he's a shadow. He's the absence of Link's purity and light. Excuse me, princess? Sony's chief of development said, this is crap after first playing Demon Souls. Shuhei Yoshida, that comment didn't age well. Sakurai added a woman to smash with huge boobs, booty shorts, torn stockings, and heels, and somehow made nerds mad about it. Outstanding achievement, really. Oh, fuck, I didn't realize Byleth was added to Smash purely for sex appeal. I'm no longer bothered that Fire Emblem is the most represented franchise in Smash Brothers with characters that have extremely similar movesets that make them redundant to begin with. Hooray for titties! I remember on Twitter someone posted about the scene in Halo 2 where Tartarus says, One more word, Oracle, and I'll rip your eye from its socket! <clears throat> Is nothing compared to what I'll do to you. And my mind was just shooketh when I saw people proclaiming that Tartarus was threatening to rape Miranda. What the f what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Why would you draw that conclusion? If a villain makes a generic threat and the first thing you think of is rape, something's wrong. I don't know what happened in your life, but I'm sorry. Oh man, this one really bothers me. Uh Halo 3, one of Halo's most dire, poorly constructed, misogynistic stories, which coasts by on its excellent surface level presentation. We've been wrong for years. Halo 3 was never about finishing the fight, it was about finishing the patriarchy. <laughs> In what dimension of insanity do you reside in where you think a story as innocuous and awesome as Halo 3 is misogynistic? That is actually damaging to women and their rights. By playing Halo 3, you are a misogynist. Or that the creators were misogynists when they wrote the story. Like, what is wrong with you, dude? PETA's Vegan Guide to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Why are we still here? just to suffer every night. I'm gonna eat twice the amount of animals I used to eat. Anytime PETA gets involved, you know it's going to be a cringe fest. The marketing team for this company has to be made up of just the most unlikable, friendless people on the planet. While you wait for Pokemon Sword and Shield, play PETA's parody, Pokemon Black and Blue. Gotta love the bloody outline and chained up Pikachu, the maniacal professor. This is an accurate depiction of Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, if you really think about it, the concept of the games is a little messed up. You know, a bunch of young kids capturing creatures and then pitting them against each other in fight clubs for money. But it's, it's a video game. It's not real. Not a single person on the planet played Pokemon and was suddenly like, you know what? Fuck animals. <laughs>
But PETA was at it again with their Animal Crossing promotion on TikTok. They stormed the museum like angels on a battlefield and demanded Blathers empty the tanks. Uh, the thing is, you have to donate fish and bugs to Blathers in order for him to build the museum. So members of PETA did that and then went into the museum to protest the animals that they donated to the museum. You what? This, this article has a perfect headline. PETA storms Animal Crossing to protest treatment of digital animals. If you ever think you're wasting your time when you're playing video games, you don't know what wasting time really is. Some hot takes are so outrageous, you have to assume the person is trolling. This channel I found is exclusively hot takes. Neo 2 sucks, Animal Crossing sucks, Resident Evil 3 Remake sucks, Ghost of Tsushima sucks, every game sucks, gaming is dead, this is the worst year for gaming ever. Yonder Font, aka the king of gaming, the king of YouTube, the realest gamer on the internet, the 100% fact spitter, the higher level thinker, the leader of the real gamer movement, the king of anime, the king of manga, and the one who's better than you in every way. This dude has more titles than Daenerys Targaryen. Even though most of you idiots on this channel simply do not deserve it. Shout out to the people who donated to keep this channel alive. I was ready to walk away from YouTube. I had my bags packed, ready to never return, never upload again. I had made a video saying if I did not receive any donations I was done. I like the whole insult my fan base while e-begging angle. I'm barely putting any time whatsoever into making this content and I'm not getting what I deserve. Ah, it's not my horrible attitude, lack of talent, or shallow character that's to blame. It's my audience, of course. I was just tired of putting out these amazing high quality videos that you can't find anywhere else. Where else are you gonna watch 15 minutes of a static background with no gameplay or editing? I'm honestly not sure if this channel is satire or not. I just, how can you consider yourself a gamer, a person of intelligence, if you play shooters? I just, you know, shooters, again, cater to the lowest of the low type of individual. Doom has been garbage since its creation. I remember playing the old school Doom games and thinking, oh, so this is what being a loser feels like. This is what, you know, being a low level thinker feels like because only losers will be playing a game like this. By the way, this Doom Eternal video was posted eight days before the game came out. Just. Something to think about. Unbiased Katie is one of the best trolls and even I was fooled by this. You shouldn't be playing video games. The chemical that your brain produces when you play video games is the same chemical that your brain produces when you commit murder. I fell for this. I thought this was real. But then you go to some of her other posts. This is clear satire. Men should not be allowed to play sports or participate in any activity that involves exercise. <laughs> Oh man, this one actually just recently happened. Uh, apparently people are boycotting 343 for removing a police-themed nameplate in MCC. I know that police brutality is a sensitive subject, but that's kind of ridiculous to protest over. I also think it's stupid to remove imagery of police officers as if the concept of law enforcement is like inherently offensive. Is anybody complaining about this in oblivion? I don't think so. Stop right there, criminal scum! A lot of hot takes tend to revolve around inclusivity and representation in video games. People are pissed when a white guy is the protagonist of a new Star Wars game. People are upset when a black guy is on the cover of a Battlefield game. Where does it end? You can't win. Both takes? Equally dumb. I just think it's incredibly unhealthy to obsess over skin color or demographics in a video game to the point where you just completely dismiss it. Like, oh, this character doesn't look, sound, and talk exactly like me? Well, it's not worth playing. That's such a close-minded perspective. Obviously, we should celebrate diversity and, like, include more unique perspectives, but it has to be done in a thoughtful way. Otherwise, it's just tokenism, you know? Strong female protagonist. And no single piece of media is ever going to represent every person from every country and every background. It, it, media is not a checklist, nor should any reasonable person expect it to. Rarely is the casting, race, and gender of characters an issue in storytelling, and never have I seen it be an issue in game mechanics. 
So you have to wonder, do people simply want diversity of skin color or diversity of thought? Again, I'll refer back to that Witcher 3 race controversy. You have a video game, an extremely popular video game, from a perspective hardly ever seen in video games aside from World War II games. Poland. But, uh-oh, too many white people. How problematic. I think you're doing yourself a disservice by trying to create this paradigm, this American paradigm, and apply it to like every type of media from every country in person, as if like representation is that simple. There is no unified standard. Game is set in Africa? Oh no, it has black zombies. Racism. Game is set in New Orleans? Also has black zombies? Oh no, racism. It's like, what next? Are we gonna complain that Sekiro Shadows Die Twice has too many Japanese people in it? Some games should strive to be inclusive, and others don't really need to be. Dragon Age, Mass Effect, KOTOR are awesome because they give characters choices. You can choose who you romance, what you look like, male or female, and Cyberpunk 2077 seems to be going down that road too. So let's celebrate these games and what they've done, rather than try to take what they've done and apply it to everything else. I guess the big takeaway is don't let people make you feel bad for enjoying video games, take care of your responsibilities, try not to take everything so seriously, and there is room for in-depth socio-political discussions about video games. However, a lot of these analysis type articles and videos are nothing more than rage bait, where the writer has to literally force concepts into a game where they don't belong, and try to analyze why this is problematic because of it. So those are some of the worst gaming hot takes I could find. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. Alright everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man, signing out. Peace! A popular new video game actually allows you to be a terrorist and kill people.